Hey guys, my name's Aaron Massey and welcome back to another episode of Homeschool. Today's project is how to fix a sliding glass door. I have an old sliding glass door that's not sliding well at all. It binds and gets stuck really easily and it's a really big pain in my butt. So if this is also happening to you, before you go out and spend $800 or more on a new sliding glass door, I'm gonna show you how you can potentially fix it on your own for about 25 bucks. I rate these projects by how many F-bombs you're likely to drop while tackling the project. This one is slightly difficult. The first step in fixing your door is the simplest and hopefully it's all you need to do. And that is to adjust the adjustment screws that control the roller assemblies at the bottom of your door. These screws are located on the bottoms of each side of the door and are sometimes concealed within holes inside the door as they are in my case. Try adjusting these screws to see if it helps your door slide better. In my case, the adjustment screws don't do anything. No matter what I do to them, the door still is the same, which means one of two things. Either the roller assemblies are broken or they're seized up. In either case, they likely need to be fixed or replaced. And in order to do that, I have to actually remove the door. First, I start by removing the screen door from the outside. Now you can use a putty knife or something to get underneath the wheels and pop the door up that way. Or in my case, there's an extension piece added to the top of the door, which I could loosen the screws and then lift the screen door out from the track and then set it aside. Next, you need to remove the fixed glass door. On the inside, you'll likely find a few screws or brackets holding your fixed glass door to the frame. Remove those and then pull the fixed glass door towards the center of the door frame to remove it from the edge of the frame, and then pick up and pull out the bottom of the door, pulling the whole door away from the frame. Now it might take a little muscle to get the door out, but once you do have it out, set it aside somewhere safe and out of the way. Finally, you can remove the sliding glass door, which is what we really want. Pick it up and swing it out the same way as you did the fixed glass door. I recommend setting it up on a set of saw horses or a nice flat, even surface so that you can work on it for the next couple steps. From here, you can get a look at the roller assemblies and see if you can get them to loosen up or adjust your wheel height. Again, mine don't seem like they wanna move and they look a little bit rusted and seized up, so I'm just gonna replace them. Now, I have an old aluminum sliding glass door which requires me to remove or slide part of the frame out of the way in order to get the roller assemblies out. If you have a vinyl door or a newer door of some kind, you may not need to do this, but in my case, I actually have to remove the frame or move it out of the way enough to get the roller assembly out. So that's what I'm gonna do. It just depends on what type of door that you have. To remove the roller assembly first, I remove the screw holding it in place at the bottom, as well as the screw holding the frame in place at the top. Next, I use a rubber mallet to tap the frame up just far enough to access the roller assembly so that I can slide it out. Beating on a glass door with a rubber mallet feels a little bit sketchy, and it is, but I assure you that this is the best way to do it and the glass is tempered, so it's pretty strong. So just don't bang on the glass with a hammer and you should be all right. With the frame out of the way, I can push the old roller assembly out. Now mine is pretty stuck in there, so I used a screwdriver and a mallet to tap it out. Both roller assemblies in my door had the same issue, so I've decided I'm just gonna replace both of them and start fresh with new roller assemblies on both ends of the door. From there, I took one of the roller assemblies with me to Home Depot to compare it with what's on the shelf. There's a lot of different rollers out there and a lot of them vary slightly but look similar. So I recommend that you bring the one you took out so that you can compare it with what's there and make sure you're getting the exact same one that you need. I was able to find matching rollers to the ones I took out for about $8 a piece, so about 16 bucks for the set. To put the new rollers in, it's a reverse process of getting them out guiding them into place and then tapping them into their final position with a mallet if needed. Once you got them back in place, it's time to bang on the frame again with the mallet, maybe drop a few F-bombs if you're a little bit nervous, and then reinsert the set screws to put the frame back together. So now that we've got the roller assemblies replaced on the door, before we put things back together, now is a great time to thoroughly clean the track out. I'm using a shop vac to clean it out and then went through with the sponge to clean out the remaining dirt and debris. In true Murphy's Law fashion, it started to rain while I had a giant hole in the side of my house in Southern California where it hardly ever rains. So I had to work quickly to put the door back together. To put the door back together, I'm going in reverse order from the way we took it apart, starting with the sliding glass door. I like to test the movement of the door before putting in the other pieces and adjusting the set screws to see if I need to change how the door slides before I put the other pieces in. Once the sliding door is in, I just put the fixed glass door in place and secure it, followed by the screen door, and then I give it one final test to make sure that everything is working smoothly, 
everything is working smoothly, so that means we are finished with this project. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Homeschooled. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Also, be sure to check out my blog. I'll be putting a detailed step-by-step -step write up to go along with this video at mrfixitdiy.com. And don't forget to follow me on social media via the links in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Installing a laminate floor is an easy project you can knock out in a couple hours or in a weekend depending on the size of the room that you're working in. Buy the flooring a few days in advance and let it sit in the room that you're installing it in to let it get acclimated to the humidity in your home before you install it.